And now, James and Stu present the Top Turnbuckle Podcast. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Top Turnbuckle Podcast with me, Stu. And me, James. As some of you may know, um, we've had a fortunate bit of luck. We've had an amazing company called um, Three Three Count Wrestling Merchandise who have decided to work with us. We're very lucky to have them on board. If you get a chance, I've posted links on our Facebook page. Go and check them out. Um, you can check them out at threecount.co.uk. Go on their Instagram account, which is at threecount underscore wrestling and facebook forward slash three count wrestling merchandise they've got some amazing merchandise uh everything from t-shirts hats figures you name it absolutely anything a wrestling fan could think of so we'd just like to say a massive thank you for wanting to get involved with us and giving us the opportunity to also give away a fantastic prize which we'll announce at the end of the lucky winner fantastic that's pretty and much I've, the same as that really isn't it it's it fucking does. awesome uh, I, I, <laughs> Could you have ever believed that me and you sitting here when we started this were going to get a sponsorship deal? No, <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. You know, just the fact that, you know, uh, I reached out, got in contact with him and I was very lucky within uh, a couple of days I was contacted back and they were more than happy to get involved with us, which is brilliant. Yeah, can't thank you guys enough. So, yeah, thank you ever so much. And hats off to you as well, Stu. Oh, that's to you cheers, for your hard work in the media yeah. and everything like that, the the advertising side of things. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic, ah, mate. Cheers, Full mate. credit to you. Most appreciated. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be posting um, links for Three Count Wrestling Merchandise on uh, on our social media pages. We'll be adding links to their um, online stores as well on our, on our YouTube channel as well. That's my responsibility. There I hope go. I do that's that. Job. I yeah. hope I uh, do you proud. <laughs> I'm going to start off on a little bit of a sombre note. Um, as some of you, um, some of you may know, I, I recently lost uh, my grandfather, who was a um, huge, huge, huge key role model, role model in my life. And I, I don't, I don't want to go on about this too much and how much he meant to me. For those of you who know me very well, James, you know you do. Uh, my grandfather was a huge, huge inspiration for me in life and a huge role model. And, um, the man that I am today, and um, ooh, are you, self- to, you know, I don't, want, you I don't self- want to get upset. I don't want to get upset. Um, but I, I simply just want to dedicate this episode to um, my granddad, Bob Watts. Um, this one's for you, granddad. Love you. Very fitting. Very fitting. Beautifully said. Oh, that was hard to do. Yeah, but um, it's from the heart, mate. It you was, wanted to yeah. do it. Yeah. No, I, I said I was going to do it. I'm going to get, like I said to you on uh, on your message, you know, mm. if you wanted to speak to, for two hours on mm. that subject, I'd sit here and let you. No, thanks. I do. I, yeah. I, I do appreciate that. And I'd also want to just say a huge thank you um, to all my family as well. You know, we, we've all really had a tough time recently. It's been a huge struggle for everyone um, and he is dearly missed. So, um yeah, thanks to all my family and close friends that knew how much knew how much he meant to me. So yep. thank you, all of you. Brilliant. Okay, so very well done on that. It was lovely, <sighs> mate. Cheers, mate. As I say, I don't mind talking about this on the podcast. You know, you do what you need to do. Yeah, no, much appreciated, yeah. mate. So let's get on with it. Okay, I'll let you go, mate. Okay, I'll- so our topics uh, we're going to cover this week. Um, it's been um, it's been really entertaining, to be honest. We've had some amazing responses on social media. Um, we've had so our topics this week for our top three um, choice of conversation starter for this episode. I, I picked top three greatest crowd pops. Now, as me and James were discussing before we started uh, started recording. Crowd pop, automatically we assume big cheer, but as James pointed out, silence is golden. It is. And I hadn't thought that until we were discussing one of my picks. Yeah. 
so we'll be covering that in just a just a second um, we're doing our first uh, rewatch which is going to be entertaining uh, we are going to be discussing the ones that you the listeners voted as the number one choice which was the mankind versus the undertaker hell in a self match from king of the ring 1998 um, I can't wait to get involved in that one because, as we all know, it's one of my favourites. And I am currently sat here wearing a Mick Foley flannel red shirt as well. I noticed that. <laughs> I, 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 that's the first thing I fucking said to you. Yeah, you walked right, Mick door. Foley? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you could say Stu now, it, you can just see the love for Mick Foley ah, just yes. emanating from him because we've actually got Mick Foley's match on the TV we waiting have. to go. And I will do that after we do the topics. Yeah, and then right towards the end, we shall be uh, discussing current events that are in the pro wrestling circuit. And last of all, uh, we'll be announcing our uh, competition winner. Uh, Just before we get started, um, I would love to give a massive shout out and a dedication to the guys from That's Why We're Messed Up podcast for giving us a wonderful uh, mention at the start of their recent episode massive thanks to you guys for that really do appreciate it and go and check their podcast out it's got great content i absolutely love their podcast i listen to the i forgot i hate to do them a disservice because i forgot what they actually called it It was the one about the clash at the castle what was what cash yeah cash cash at the castle yeah and uh (coughs) i I thought there were some really really cool topics in there which which we're actually yeah we're actually going to talk about aren't we um I loved hearing their views. I mm. loved the dynamic. I thought the That's dynamic really, was fantastic. Really yeah, go check them out, guys. Go check them out. So um, let's go straight into our top three choices. Uh, do you want to start this one off? Yeah, I'm going to start this go then. Okay. It. Are we doing it in any particular order? Mine are not in any particular oh. order, Stu. I've oh, just... <laughs> are they? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And I will give you prior notice. I have dodged putting anything to do with Mick Foley in this one. I, I, could, I, I think we both have. Yeah. I think I we both have. a shitload of his so, stuff. But. So could I. In fact, I was going to, wasn't I, and leave. But I've actually left that one. Yeah. In fact, I'll do that one as an honourable mention. I'm only yeah. going to I'm only gonna do that quite quick. I'm going to shut my honourable mention at the end. That, that's going to be the uh, honourable mention. Yeah. Mick Foley's title win, the first title win on Raw, and I believe it was January 1999. Uh, I think you're right. Yes. Yes, it was. Real feel-good yep. moment. Wonderful. Oh, it choked me up, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Still does now. <laughs> yeah. And and that's just an honourable mention. We'll link yeah. what we'll do is we'll link that in the mm. uh in the page. We'll get that on the page. Uh, yeah, we'll get that on the Facebook page and any any other of our social media outlets. So okay. Let's go. Let's go for your first choice. Okay, so my first choice, I don't think a lot of people picked up on the situation with my first choice, but it's Triple H's return. In January 2002. Great choice. The reason... And I I would actually put this as my number one. Yeah, I would, actually. Cool, go for it, yeah. And the reason why is we see a lot now, don't we, of the crowd getting involved and not allowing the uh, wrestlers to talk or giving them a cheer for so long. Triple H is a monster heel before he gets injured. He was hated. He ran... The 2000s, he was the number one heel. Well, it's without a doubt. I mean, there, there was Kurt Angle in there. Yeah. Yeah. But Triple H was the main one. It was Triple H and The Rock, yeah. especially throughout the first half yeah. of 2000 with Steve Austin was injured. Yeah, the yeah, Undertaker yeah. was injured. Yeah. Now, in 2001, Triple H in a tag team match, I think he's with Austin. Yeah, I think you're right on that one. And I think... It's Benoit and Jericho. Yeah. He tears his quad and goes down. Horrifically. And he finishes the fucking match. Mm. But the damage was so bad that a lot of people thought he was not actually going to be able to come back. So moving on eight months later, he's scheduled in January on Raw to return. Now everyone's... They're not sure how this is going to go. It's a Madison Square Garden crowd. Mm -hmm. And with the crowd being so... It's a very alert crowd to everything. It's like... How can I explain it? The reality behind the scenes. It's it's Madison Square Garden. Yeah. You know, it's... 
but but they know yeah. they know like the reality of yeah. uh, the people what Ooh. they're going through they they know the characters they know yeah. Paul Levesque yeah, yeah, yeah let's put yeah, it that yeah, way yeah, yes yeah. so when Triple H's music hits the crowd just go insane they went ape shit absolutely insane proper and oh, I love this phrase batshit crazy and if you actually watch Triple H there is he's an he's a consummate professional and I want to I want to state right now because I've heard it I've heard it a lot Triple H was over before Stephanie yep yeah. and this proves it yeah massively this reaction Triple H is trying so hard not to actually break down on this yeah, I mean, you you showed us the video um, literally, you know, a few minutes before we before we started recording. Um, I think it's literally as he just sets foot on the ramp and There's starts a- to walk down. You can see here. I know he's covered himself in water and his face is wet, but you can't take you can't hide those red red eyes. Yeah, and also That's pure emotion. Also, Stu, what's what's really good is that he's still being Triple H, the performer, but. There's these tiny tells almost where the poker face comes down yeah. and you see Paul Levesque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Massively. very slight, but you just see it. And I have actually listened to Triple H on yeah. this and he has confirmed that. When he mm. came out, he nearly broke down. He he could not believe. He, he can't. I mean, that is... Like, I, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I mean, that, that pop was just... Mm. It, it was... It's a... It's a classic moment. Best for the number one heel in the company. Yeah. Work that out. This is the guy who was knocked Steve Austin over with a car. Well, he was the uh, mastermind, yeah, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. You know, I know it's Mr. Pete was, you know, in Larry's all set, but, you know, it's sledgehammer to people's heads, you know, did go, you know, his character going out to end people's careers. Beating Jim Ross up. Yeah. You know, Mick Foley. I mean, Mick Foley fires Mick Foley yeah. uh, two years before yeah. and gives him a pink slip yeah. and all this sort of. He's absolutely hated. He's, he's, this is one of the greatest heels of WWE and WWF history, and he is over as soon as that opening riff of Motorhead starts. I think the pop is for Paul Levesque. Yeah. I don't think it's for Triple H. It's a welcome back. It, and it's also a respect. Yeah. It's pure respect of a man who it's, has been rehabilitating yeah. for eight months. It, it's love and admiration for that man's craft. Yes. The fact that he came back from something that severe in only eight months. Yep. That's a hell of a recovery for cool. something that serious. Dear. You know. Yeah, uh, so... Oh, it's a great pick. What we're going to do is we are going to link that. Yep. As I say, I'll leave it there. There's a lot more that could be said about it, but I'll leave it there and I'll link the YouTube link. Yep. Yeah, we'll, slip, we'll stick that on our um, Facebook page. for. I mean, to be fair, if any of you out there haven't seen it, fuck me, where have you been for ever? <laughs> I think it could... I, I actually think Stuart can be forgotten about. Shame on him. I think that it can be forgotten. And as I said, just remember, guys... This is the number one heel in the company, and yep. this is probably the first time that it ever happens. That sort of yeah. appreciation, which you kind of see at the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Man. Or when oh, someone yeah. comes oh, back. Yeah, 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 the, the, yeah. You know when the crowd actually just cheers someone yeah. and they don't let them talk on the microphone. Yeah. No, fucking great choice. Okay. Happy days. Brilliant. Right. Um, I'm going to start in reverse order for my one, and I, I kind of thought outside the box and um, went with something a bit different. Um, as it turns out, James actually messaged me this uh, this <laughs> clip uh, a fair few months back before we started doing this podcast. And when I talked to him about it, he went, I fucking sent you that. Yeah, I, I did. Oh, I shit. Actually did. Uh, this- I, I scoured back for about two months worth of messages and went, oh, shit, yeah, he did. Yeah, well, this, <laughs> this individual, this individual, I'll just say, some of you might not know this individual. This individual is well known throughout the Indies and New Japan. And he's one of my favourite wrestlers at the moment. Oh, yeah. So I'll let you carry home, on from And he's there. a homegrown boy as well. He's he certainly, he certainly is. Oh, yes. Yeah. So my first choice comes from New Japan Pro Wrestling's pay-per-view resurgence from 2021. So I'm going for quite recent. Yep. And it's from August 14th. And it is Will Ospreay and his unknown return. Because mm. he, he, at the point when this happened... Um, 
Will Ospreay was severely injured, um, suffered a serious, serious injury against uh, Shingo Takagi. Um, Can I just in the chat? Was it a, was it a neck injury? It was. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was a very, very severe it's neck bad. injury. Yeah. Um, <sighs> he took three months out. Now, for a neck injury, you know, not to, you know, I'm not going to put it in a comparison with, you know, the, the Triple H quad tier, but a neck injury, you know, for that profession, that's make or break, you know, cool. not I wanting to it. use the word break, you know, literally, but um, that is a make or break <clears throat> injury. And the fact that he came back from three months afterwards is fucking impressive. I think what you have to add in there, Stu, is it's a psychological injury. Oh, massively. Just Mass- hearing and broken I, neck. Yeah, and I, I, I watched the clip back, mm. um, and I, I will post the um, the clip of, you know, um, on there for anyone that hasn't hasn't seen it or hasn't heard about it or hasn't heard anything to do with Will Ospreay. Um, if you haven't, fuck me, you're in for a treat. This I, guy's I, amazing. Absolutely the, amazing. Similar to you with Mick Foley. Yeah. There's not much more that I can say apart from I absolutely love this guy. Yeah. Go and watch him. Yeah. And how he's not already in WWE or AEW is a travesty. Yeah. Um, well, you never know. It may happen with the uh, AEW's work with New Japan at the moment. Oh, God. You never know. He, he's the best wrestler in the world, in my yeah. opinion, at this present time. But the um, the reason the reason why I picked this crowd pop is um, the only the only thing that doesn't do this justice, and I had to Google this. Right, do you know what the crowd size for this event was? I would estimate it to be around about two to five thousand. Fucking hell, mate! That's close enough. It was two thousand two hundred twenty-two people. Yeah, um, and it was just check me notes. It, yeah, it was at the LA Coliseum. Yep. Then now, that's pretty sad, though, mate. To yeah. actually watch. No, I'm talking about me to actually watch so much wrestling that I can oh, no, actually yeah, tell yeah, you like, the attendance of the fucking audience from fucking, just looking at it. I told you, fucking Wikipedia, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, it's it's literally two, you know, two and a bit thousand people there. So as I said, I will post the link um, for this video. But the thing that makes this more for me is the fact that his return wasn't planned. It wasn't planned. The fact that he walked out there after a match that had finished, grabbed the mic, and you have never seen shit talk like it. He buries so many people. Yep. So many companies. And then at the end of it, because he, he, you know, he was removed from being the champion, he had his title take away from him because he couldn't compete, uh, shit dropped the champion at the time, mm. then also went straight on to shit stare against John Moxley. Yeah, I think he called him a wanker. He which called him a we appreciate wanker. In, uh, England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for any of you guys listening abroad, which you know overseas, which we thank you ever so much, the fact that you know, a homegrown talent boy like Will Osprey is calling people a little wanker. Also, wanker, <laughs> wanker in. Maybe in America, isn't mm. seen as a really bad word. Here, it's a bad word. Yeah, it's you know, it's. I mean, the C bomb's probably the worst one you can ever hear. But I can't imagine yeah. I, I, if he drops that one day. I oh, just you know, wow. <laughs> but C bomb and wanker are probably the two that you don't hear in most films. No, no, unless it's British films. That's yeah, fair. but even but then, he, um, it's used in, with caution sometimes, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, the cr- going back to it, the crowd pop that he gets. I mean, it's not from the from the video. It doesn't seem that loud, but you got to remember, there's only two thousand people there. That's pretty. You know, it doesn't sound big, but it is fucking big. But the reactions that he gets every time he name drops, shit stirs, and calls people out on being, you know, like I said, little wankers, this, that, and the other, gets a massive pop. And what makes it even better at the end. It's because he is so fucking annoyed that he had his title taken away from him, he brings another one out of a bag. Yeah. I think it's the original one. I think you're right. And I don't know also, if he's held it hostage or what. He wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> he, but then, he has got a reputation for being a little bit... Well, I wouldn't even say cocky because, guys, if you watch this individual, he defies logic. He actually is... <laughs> I, I, I mean, special effects sometimes yeah. couldn't even... I mean, do what if, he does. If, if, you could, <laughs> if you could morph someone like the the Lucha Brothers with AJ Styles, 
and Kenny Omega, yes. do you have the same amount of talent still as Will Ospreay? I think you've nailed it there. I, I really think that though, those three that you mentioned, I know there's a tag team yeah, in there, yeah, but yeah. I think those three, if you put all those together... You've got Will Ospreay. Yeah, and, and, and then some. Yeah. Because he's that good. Yeah. And he's brilliant on a mic. Yep. He's absolutely brilliant on the mic. Do you, do you know, can I just say something? Yeah. He, is it just me or is he giving me rock vibes? Like, how do you mean? Just the look that he's come out with now, but he's, he's part of a little bit he's of me, isn't he? Yeah, he's bulked up. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's got the sunglasses. Mm. He's got like the jacket. Yeah. On the shirt. It's, it's, you know, I, I see, the, and I don't mean this as a negative, yeah. I mean it as a positive. I see the 99 rock. I see Rick Rude in him. Yeah. I see the rock. It's it's the how he carries himself, which I'm all for. You know, I am all for. Yeah. But yeah, he's fucking awesome. And then last bit I'm going to add to this and then I'm done. So after the whole belt incident, uh, oh, sorry, before the belt incident, I got this wrong in order. So before that, you know, his grand return and coming up, you have got the New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 contest, which is, it's massive. I it is a tells, massive event. Doesn't he tell everyone he's not going to fucking enter he on purpose? He proper fucking yeah. goes for it and milks it so the crowd are getting so hyped. Holy shit, he's back. He's going to enter G1. He goes, fuck that competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're working for this company and you've just shit stirred them. <laughs> you've got balls, mate, and I applaud you for it. So that's I'm, that's that's my number three pick I, I am done I'm gonna post it I think it's it's something it's something close to 10 or 16 minutes but it is pure gold it's brilliant it's so good go and check out will Osprey oh, he please is do. fucking phenomenal I, I imagine we we have a lot of pretty hardcore wrestling fans in there I imagine they've watched will Osprey uh, uh, I'd be shocked if you I'll, know. I'll just mention a match the uh Wrestle Kingdom, oh. light heavyweight title yeah. match. I think it was against, oh, was it Takahashi? I think so. Uh, yes, yes, it was. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. The defies. That, that's a game changer. Defies. Absolute game changer of a match. Almost gravity, science. Yeah. It's unbelievable. He and the rest of the guys who he works with for New Japan Pro Wrestling have crafted something no other company can rival. Ah, oh, the, the, the in-ring work. If you want to watch in-ring work. It, it's no wonder so many big performers want to go to New Japan. Yeah. Because it is phenomenal. And you can see stars, especially in AEW now, who have obviously been there. Mm. Now, granted, I don't think they're on the same scale as Will Ospreay. I think... But like you said, I, I, like you said Will Ospreay deserves to be way, way bigger than he is. Yes. I, I think Kenny Omega... I think Kenny Omega and him are very close. Yeah. I just think that Will Ospreay, some of the things that he does literally <laughs> defy size. Defies gravity. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah, that's my number three pick. Really good one. And, oh, and. Right. Thanks for sending me the link months back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my number two pick, and do you know what? This is the first time I probably got caught out on notes. Right. I haven't wrote down the year. So I'm gonna have to or it's just calculate it. <laughs> yeah. My number two pick, and I'm not gonna spend too much time on this actually, because it's quite recent. I think it's 2011, and you can all fact check that afterwards. It's the Rock's return as the guest host to WrestleMania 27. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah, 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 yeah. Can't yeah, can't contest that. Yeah. yeah great. Hell of a pop. Yeah. I was unreal. If you remember, they brung the lights down. Yeah. And they, they made it look as if it was going to be a Hollywood actor. Yeah. Or someone who's an A-list celebrity. Yeah. Which obviously it was. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah, he's a bona fide Hollywood actor now. Yeah. But the rumours at the time, and this is the, if you listen to the crowds. Yeah. While all these lights are going down, mm. they kind of don't give a fuck. Because the rumour <laughs> was that it was going to be Justin Bieber. You're fucking joking. I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? Yep. Fucking 
fuck that. The Rock oh. even mentions it in the promo. I've forgotten that. Yeah, he even mentions it Is in it the promo. Genuinely, that, yes. That- that was the rumor. That was the that was the rumor flying around that it was going to be Justin Bieber. So, I think there was another rumor that it could have been Kim Kardashian because oh, fucking sorry. Yeah. No, I'm not. Do you know what? My blood's boiling like the whole Logan yeah. Paul rant. I'm I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not fucking right. Stop clicking. If you remember, me. the Rock got in the <laughs> the Rock got in the uh, ring and said, "You, I think you was all expecting Justin Bieber and all this oh. or something like that." He said in the promo, I'm sure he did say that. Fuck Bieber. Oh, just, no. But the whole promo oh. as well was amazing. If you remember, he's, I oh, know, I fucking know, mate. Man. <laughs> what would the fucking point of that be? I, I think they were doing it on purpose. I think they liked that rumour. Because so, not, the, the not, reaction of the crowd was unreal right. because they they were about to shit on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Rock's music hit and they absolutely right. went crazy. What year was this one again? I think we're guessing here. I think it was 2011 because uh, WrestleMania right. so, 27. Because right. I was going to ask, was that the one where he brought Ronda Rousey out? But no, that was yeah, that weren't that long ago. But that was 31 mm. when he. When he got slapped, it yeah. was 31, and then Ronda was... Rousey like, was in the front row. Yeah. 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 Oh, that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, so <laughs> if you remember, there was genuine heat between him and John Cena, and yeah, he buried right. Cena on yeah. the mic. Yeah, which takes some doing, to be fair. It was funny. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that one there. Again, we are going to link these. Yeah. Too right, yeah. Well, I, I, I think that one's well remembered. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. think I need to it's, go into much detail. Pot. It's a massive yeah. pop. So my number two pick is now, as we said at the beginning of the intros, silence is golden. Mm. This had both. This had silence, a lot more silence, and then a massive fucking pop once the crowd realised what the fuck was going on. My number two pick comes from an episode of Raw on uh, July 18th, 2009. And it was Bray Wyatt as The Fiend. His first appearance on Raw, where he absolutely decimated Finn Balor. I think it's a really good pick. Now, I've got to give massive, massive props to Finn Balor on this because he sold that so well where his music, he's just coming off the back of a victory. His music slowly, eerily slows down and Mm. then fades out. And it's the first, normally when we get these big crowd pop moments, the lights just go. Yep. But the whole arena went out in random sections. It wasn't like, you know, section A went, then B went, then C went. They They were so sporadic. And then you had darkness you also For, had that really fucked up screeching music. I love that. Yeah. That's so eerie. Mm. It, it is literally like something straight out of a horror film. Yeah. Which is exactly what that character is. And then you do, like you said, you get that eerie screeching noise. And in the background, you can hear a muffled sound, which is obviously, you know, the fiend just decimating Finn Balor. And then a, a, a faint... Very dim spotlight hits the centre of the ring and you've got the fiend crouched down in the Sister Abigail position with Finn Balor and he just fuck. Now, I genuinely think that is the nearest to a perfect Sister Abigail I've ever seen. It'd been waiting to do that for cool, nearly a year. Yeah. That whole process of building that character up came to the best climax that it could have possibly got. And that crowd at that time just didn't know what to say. No. It was silence. Now, once once Finn Balor gets hit by the sister Abigail, you see, you know, the Fiend just stands up, arms spread out, and you can see those piercing red and yellow eyes through the mask. And then the crowd just goes, like that, holy shit. It is... I'm, see, I'm talking about it now, and yeah. I can feel the hairs on my arms going up. That was such an impact. An amazing, amazing, in, absolutely amazing entrance. I think the reason it's so clever is because even though we had seen The Fiends in the Firefly Funhouse, yeah. 
we didn't know what we were going to get as a wrestling yeah. attire and we got yeah. exactly what we saw yeah. and sometimes you'll see something on a promo especially something that's so creative as that because I remember thinking, I don't know about anyone else out there, I remember seeing that outfit and thinking, how in the fuck is he going to wrestle yeah. in that? Yeah. And he actually did come out in that attire. And I yeah. was like, wow. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah. From a creative point of view, I, I we've spoken before, even on and off, uh, off air for this podcast, I have so much respect and admiration for um, Bray Wyatt. He's... As far as creativity goes, he's a fucking genius. Can I just add one little thing that we forgot to mention mm. in regard to Wayne and Mercy? Mm-hmm. If you remember last yes. episode, we were yes. talking about Wayne and Mercy. And that's Mercy the Buzzard. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's Wayne and Mercy. Of course, yeah, because the Buzzard's even got the shirt on as yes. well. Oh, shit. Which gives you the of highlight of where he got well, you the got, character. You, you can from. hear his accent as well as yep. the bird, you know, as Bray, does, you know, or Wyndham, sorry, does um, all the voices. I, I love the fact he does the voice with Sister Abigail because it's just fucking hilarious. I like Huskus. <laughs> and Vince. <laughs> yeah. Devil boss. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's some damn good shit. <laughs> You, if, if you haven't seen it like I said I'm going to post it on our Facebook page uh, go and watch it uh, I defy anyone to tell me that there's been a better entrance than that I would certainly say there's been a better ending to a match and that is the SummerSlam match with Finn Balor oh, yeah, yeah. which is the first time we see the Fiends oh, with the lamp yep Oh, and after the match... That is the stuff of fucking nightmares. That yeah. Man. I fucking love it. So do I. But it's so creepy. Yep. I have never heard a crowd after a match shout, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There was a chant once he left the stage, that spotlight hits him when he's on the entrance way. Yeah, yeah. And it ended... So it's when it goes black and all you can yep. hear is... <laughs> yeah, and then after that happens, that. they put the lights back on, and Finn Balor was sitting up as if to go, "What the fuck just hit me?" Again, and, fair props to yeah, Finn and, Balor. That, that was that was perfect. That and, that feud was perfect, and the whole crowds are chanting, "That was awesome." Yeah, not this. That yeah. was awesome. And then I'm just going to end it there. Yeah, yeah, and then they buried him a fucking Goldberg. <laughs> I'm going to try and go. Because <laughs> we have to name Goldberg. If <laughs> an episode's about going on about this All guy. Right. We'll, 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 uh, we'll put the nail in the coffin on that one. That's done. Right, that's my number two done. Yes. Fuck Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck it. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to say this, right? If Goldberg turns up at Clash of the Castle, I want a fucking refund. <laughs> I want that as a chant. Unless it's we against the ring post. <laughs> Unless it's against the ring post. No, no, no. WrestleMania. Because, we've already called that. Uh, that's, yeah. That's going to be WrestleMania. Oh, God. It's piss break time. Like we said. It'll be over in 20 seconds. I know it will. Are you going to raise, a heart, raise an arm for a ring post? They'll just pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, we're going off again. Go for it. Go on. <laughs> You're next. It's got more motor skills. I think you could do a better jack game, that's for sure. <laughs> Lawsuit. <Yeah. laughs> that might not go in. Oh. Nah, fuck it, keep it in, it'll be funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So moving on to this what's coming up, which this is, is number one. This is not my number one. Oh no, 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 just... Triple H is not yeah, sorry, yeah. you've gone uh, backwards. Well, I wow. said I said Triple H was my number one yeah. because I'd have thought uh, I, you know I, I was thinking about it and actually oh, yeah so we've just been talking about Clash at the Castle and I'm going to take you back thirty years so you should all be thinking about 1992 yeah I was ten going on eleven yeah yeah I, that had some serious serious thinking in it <laughs> yeah 
SummerSlam 1992. Nice. And it's when the Bulldog gets the free count over Brett. Yeah. That's the home crowd as well, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. You've got nearly 90,000 in that stadium. Wem- and, Wembley? Yeah. And yeah. That you've, we must remember, and this is important for WWE, mm. with the Clash at the Castle. The British culture is a football and rugby culture, and it's a very different crowd to the States. Yeah. I'm not saying that in a... Which is, derogatory way. Yeah, yeah. Which, and, is, which is why I was genuinely surprised. They, well, well, we'll cover that later. Which is why I'm really surprised that they cut, they picked the Principality Stadium. I don't know why they did that. Mm. I, I'm not. I'm still not sure. Mm. Apparently, it's because Vince likes Wales. I don't know. Oh, what, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, that's what I heard. Fuck, he's okay. the boss. He can do what he fucking yeah. likes, really, can't he? Yeah. So when the free count goes down, the mm. crowd cheer likes a goal. Yeah, yeah. It's a different I, type, yeah, type yeah. of cheer. It's it's more like England scoring a goal against Germany. Yeah. I, do you know, so I'll kind of explain that for anyone that's overseas. When, when you're watching like a pay-per-view event or something, you know, a house show or anything like that, you can hear the crowd start cheering up when they're going for a, a pinfall. Yeah. But we're, we're comparing it to, yeah, a rugby match or a football match. Well, or you can compare overseas, it to rugby. You can call it a soccer match. Yeah. When as soon as the balls cross that line, or a rugby player's cross that line, the ball's going to go down. That cheer just explodes. And I'm not saying it explodes. I'm not saying this in any way because wrestling's one of my biggest passions and loves everything like that. There is no bigger cheer than a goal or a try. Yeah, so that's what we're yeah. trying to get at. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a eruption of emotion, mm. and that's what you get when the bulldog wins uh, and it's and it's what's made even better is it's a home crowd it's Wembley Stadium well it's our culture is, yeah it's Wembley as we remember it yes and it's our culture you have to remember what, what I'm trying to get what I'm trying to get at we are used to cheering like that so it's a different type of cheer it's yeah. like a goal has just been scored or a try yeah, yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. it's loud yeah. and the, the the American audience I think it's still ranked as the big, one of the biggest pops. It, well, do you know what? Yeah. I'd, I think it yeah, is. I'll agree with that. Yeah. I think it's massive. Yeah. It's, You've got to think, well, how, what was the capacity for Wembley Stadium back in those days? Well, because they were on the field as well, yeah. I would say it was about 90,000. <laughs> I reckon there was about 80, so, mid 80s in there. You're looking at Wembley Stadium, say 90,000 people. That's about the average, you know, stadium capacity for in the States now. It, it, it's one you of know. their biggest crowds. It's yeah. uh, like when we look at Texas, when they did, mm. I think it was 32. Yeah. And they wanted to break the indoor attendance. I don't know if they did it or not, but I think they tried to get 120 in there and they got close to 100 in there. Right. Right. Do you remember 32? It's when they hardly yeah, had any yeah. wrestlers. Yeah, let's, let's say about that in a minute. Yeah, we won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, that's, yeah, fucking brilliant, Pete. Yeah, I think it goes well with Clash at the Castle as well. Yeah. I yeah. think that's what that's what WWE can expect from the crowd. It's going to be a very, very different crowd. And we've yeah, seen massively. that with uh, NXT UK. Yeah. When we first saw the UK title on the mm-hmm. line, we had a very, very different crowd who were football chanting. Yeah. Well, like football chanting. So if you remember, there was one wrestler... And he was called, I can't remember, he says called Joseph something. And they were chanting, he's got his own face on his arse. (laughs) He's got, he said, he's had his face on on his, uh, the back of his slide trucks. And they were going, he's got his own face on his (laughs) arse. For for pure entertainment factor, you know, it's a slight tangent. Anyone that's overseas that wants to hear, you know, the, the funny shit that us Brits come out with when you're at a sports event, go on YouTube. Yeah. Just type in funny football chants. I, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Most of them ain't even about football. I'll let you know that. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah. They're, they're about the players, <laughs> but they've got nothing to do with a football. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Yeah, I think that goes well on uh, yeah. Clash of the Castle. Yeah, that ties uh, in nicely, to be fair. And we, yeah. we are going to Clash of the Castle, guys. We will try our best to get you some good pictures, good videos. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe us talking yeah. predictions before. Yeah, 
Hell, if, I mean, if any if anyone else on the podcast is, you know, any of the listeners out there in listener land, if anyone's going to it, drop us a message. Yeah, you know? we'll meet you somewhere. Yeah, we'll meet up, have a drink, or, yep. you know. Or just have a chat. Yeah. Just as a group. Yeah, shoot the shit. Drop us your thoughts. Cracking. Sort of like Arsenal fan TV style. We have a little <laughs> crowd there, just. <laughs> <laughs> but less shit. <laughs> the US. I was, I was going to be quite harsh here and say the US wouldn't probably know that, but there are actually a lot of uh, US soccer fans, so yeah, they would. True. Yeah, they yeah, would. Yeah, we'll give them that. Yeah, right. All done? I'm pretty happy, mate. Yeah? yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to go for my last one, and this this is my number one pick, and I'm pretty sure James is not going to be fucking surprised who's in it. So it's Money in the Bank 2011. It's the main event. Mm. CM Punk versus John Cena in the hometown Allstate Arena in Chicago. Now, as we all know, I'm a massive Punk fan. You know, I'm a massive Mick Foley fan. You know, anyone that listens to us, re- re- you know, frequently fucking knows that. You had at this event 14,815 capacity. And there is a good minute's worth of silence before Punk's music kicks in and all you can hear is the CM Punk chant yeah now Chicago it still happens now we know that and even in WWE to this very day you still hear his name chanted you will (laughs) never hear his name chanted as loud as that night though now as soon as that Kill Switch Engage song kicks in it goes batshit crazy even to the point when he finally gets into the ring, he sits down cross-legged in the middle of the ring. The music finishes. He gets up, starts waving his arms at the crowd. They're going fucking nuts. This goes on for, I believe, yeah, four minutes and 30 seconds yep. after his music finishes. Yep. Massive, massive, massive crowd pop. It's, it's the moment. fucking huge. And it's whether or not you like CM Punk, you have got to admit... This is massive. It is a it is a proverbial lion's den. That's the way I would yeah. describe it. Like you say, they're chanting CM Punk. They are behind their guy. You've got to remember the storyline at the time, which was... The contract ends at midnight. Yeah, and also that was a real storyline. Yeah, it and was. And I think... It wasn't a They work. knew... Mm-hmm. So, you know, that crowd were fully behind well, him. You've only got to look at the signs in the crowd, man. Yeah. If Punk loses, we riot. Yeah. And we talked about that literally, of, you know, some, stuff like that happening. That would have happened. If WWE had worked it that Punk would lose, mm. they know damn well that arena was going to get torn to fucking shreds. It, yeah, it's the best way I can describe it. Mm. It's a lion's den. But again, props to John Cena. Yeah, I was just about to say. That is a tough, tough... And let's face it, this guy's had shit. They're, they're friends. But, they're friends. Oh, yeah. No, I know. I know. I know. He was up against the wall from the minute that match started. Yeah. It was the best person to be in there. Yeah. Even though they tried to fucking get oh, Alberto Del Boring as fuck. Oh, God. Like, uh, that, that's the only issue I've got with that match. I didn't mind that. Are you talking about the bit where they, they called him down with the money in the yeah, bank? Vince, Vince yeah, I, I, I think you could have got a broomstick to come down with the money in the bank. It was just the fact that Vince was going to try and stop him yeah, no matter yeah. what. So he called the money in the bank winner down. Yeah. And said, get Del Rio out here, get Del Rio. Was it needed? I, th- I think it added to the drama. I fucking hated it. I, I didn't mind I hated it. it. I didn't mind it because if you think about it, it was Vince desperately trying to thwart him because he's yeah. got his title. See, I get that, but it's just, it's Del Rio. Yeah, I, don't know I, I we've understand. We've talked about him in the past, but we have, fucking hell, we have. You could, like you said, you could have sent a broomstick down with the fucking yeah, money in the belt and just he'd have got a better pop than him. That's what I was trying to get from the creative. Really, yeah. I think it was, it was more dull. that Vince was trying to say, "Get the money in the mm. bank, fucker, down here now, the winner," because mm. he's. He's going to take my title. Yeah. I don't think it mattered it was Del Rio. 
uh, like I said, it could have been a broomstick. All punk yeah. had to do was run away from it. Yeah. Don't like, let it get cashed in. Run away. Jump into the crowd and leave. Yeah. So, which brings me to that point. My absolute favourite moment of that is the proper insult to injury. Is when he sat on the barrier. Yeah, you, right. For, so if obviously you guys can't see what's just happened, but James has just done exactly what I was about to say. Was Punk looks at Vince and blows him a kiss. Yeah, that that's that is literally. He, it's great storytelling because yeah. it's basically setting up goodbye. I've got your belt, yeah. and that's that's why I I agree with you with the Del Rio yeah. bit, but I think it's more powerful. When you call when Cena's just been beaten, everyone's like, "Holy shit, he's got the title!" Yeah, and then Vince quickly scurries as the hill. Yeah, get the money in the bank, guy down here mm. now. I think it adds creativity to it. In other words, desperation. Like I need to get my belt, yeah. get the money in the yeah. bank, guy down. Uh, yeah. So as much as I do not, and I, you got to remember, he was my pick as the most, one of the overrated guys. Who? <clears throat> Del Rio was. Oh, no, no. I, yeah, I completely yeah. agree. So yeah. I... Yeah, massively. As I said... Absolute dog shit. It could have been a broomstick coming down yeah. with the belt. I would uh, pay money to belt, that. With the briefcase, you yeah. know. As long as he got away from it, yeah. it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could have had Perry Satin's moppy come down. That'd yeah. That would better. Fuck it. Yeah, so that's my number one pick. We're fucking brutal on here, mate. Some of the <laughs> no, stuff we know. fucking say. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? Yeah. Exactly. In my like, mind, it is. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, yeah, that wraps up our um, our top threes. We have, we had some absolutely brilliant comments for this one. Um, a lot of involvement, which is, it's exactly what we love to see. We love to hear. Um, I'm just going to read out a few of them. Um, we've had our very, very good friend who was on our previous episode, uh, Johnny. He has mentioned um, his first pick was... First one I'm going to read out is Johnny Coote, who was obviously on our last episode. Great friend of the podcast. His first pick was Daniel Bryan leaving the Wyatt family in Raw 2014. Uh, the Hart Foundation entrance from In Your House 16, the Canadian Stampede. The crowd gets louder for each individual wrestler as they come out. And his final pick was Hulk Hogan's return to SmackDown 2002. The crowd doesn't stop cheering for him for nearly eight minutes straight. Absolutely brilliant choices there, Johnny. Fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'd just like to point out the Daniel Bryan one. Yeah. I, I think the Daniel Bryan one was absolutely amazing. I think, and obviously I am trying to use my knowledge here, I yeah. think it's the one when he's on top of the cage. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's chat. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Chris Francis, uh, his choices were TLC, uh, TLC match at WrestleMania 23 when Jeff Hardy jumped off the ladder, taking Edge out on the on the ladder outside of the ring. Yeah, it's really Se- good. Second choice, Kurt Angle winning the WWF Championship in the Invasion storyline. Yeah, yeah, that has a lot to do with 9-11. Yeah. Uh, Edge spearing Jeff Hardy off the ladder in the epic TLC match. That gets a massive pop, to be fair. And it's still painful to fucking watch. Which one is this? Uh, TLC match. WrestleMania uh, 17. I believe so, yeah. The Dudley Hardy and Edge, Christian. Yeah, and Edge. Edge speared uh, Jeff Hardy. Edge does that uh, bump and looks up afterwards. That's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Jim Sangwell has gone way, way further than anyone else on this answer. He's picked quite a few. Okay. And they're awesome. Uh, he's got a couple of personal favourites. Hogan's Return. Yep. Uh, Brian versus Bray in the cage match on Raw, as That's Johnny mentioned. The one that I, yeah. Yep. Uh, Daniel Bryan winning the title at Mania. Yes. Dolph, Dolph Ziggler's cash in. Yes. Seth's cash in at WrestleMania. Yes. Also mentions to Finn and Nakamura's t- uh, NXT debuts. Yep. Uh, as he's put, oh, and Sting, of course, and the NWO in the Sting Triple H match. That'll do. <laughs> Which one was that? Uh, Sting, uh, what's it put? Oh, Sting, of course, and the NWO and the Sting Triple H match. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, a few other mentions here quickly. We've got Rob Shepard. Uh, I'm going for when Brock came back in Raw after WrestleMania 28, and especially when he kicked Cena's ass. Yeah, I think that one was really good. Yeah. Uh, Billy Morgan, AJ Styles debut for WWE, which was pretty cool, as I was a big fan of his and his TNA career. 
Yeah, that was a bit of a shocker. That was the real Rumble it was word debut. Fuck, that number was, three. That, I don't yeah. know why you come out three, though. That's my only thing yeah. with that. That's the only, yeah, that's the only issue I've got. But that reaction was fucking awesome. Because nobody knew what it was. take away from the reaction. Nah, it's a great pop. Um, absolutely brilliant choices there, folks. Thanks ever so much. And also thanks to everyone who uh, who took the time out to um, leave us a comment and get involved. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Really, really appreciate it. So we are going to go straight into our um, our rewatch. And what we've decided to do for this one is we are literally just going to, we have got the match on, basically. Yep. Um, we are going to give our commentary in the background for this. Um, if you want to get involved with this, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Okay, yes. Yeah, so what we're going to do, guys, is here's the instructions. If you want to watch this match with us, go to WWE Network. Go to King of the Ring 1998 and we have the match timer at 1.47.01. That's one hour 47. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching it at 1 minute 47, you're going to be severely fucking disappointed. Is that what I said? No, I was joking. <laughs> Thank fuck. Okay, we're leaving that in. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> it's fucking fine, mate. Okay, so. Yeah, if you want to get involved, crack on. Um, we're starting the match at uh, one hour and 47 minutes and one second. So if you want to get in, you've got to the count of three or pause the episode, get to where you need to get and join in. So on three, we're going to go one, two, three. Okay. Okay, so. Look at that hell in a cell coming down. It is awesome. It so is. we've got to remember, folks, that this is, you know, there'd been how many hell in a cell matches before this? One. There. That was the Undertaker Shawn Michaels one, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. This This is still relatively new to the whole, you know, so this was WWF back in those days. Mm. This was a relatively new concept of a match. Um, I'm not going to take away you know, anything from The Undertaker and the Shawn Michaels one. It, it is a fantastic match to watch. I think it's better, actually. Get the fuck out. <laughs> okay, let's, let's leave that. <laughs> uh, wanker. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. Okay, so. <laughs> fucking hell, man. <laughs> as we can see. My boy. Mick's coming down. And I think you can kind of see psychologically Mick thinking about this. I think he knows what's coming. You got to remember, yeah. this is a semi-main. Yeah. I'm not sure the crowd are fully aware of what they're about to see. No. I think Mick it's, knows what he's going to do. Yeah. In his head, he knew what he was going to do. Yeah. I'm not entirely convinced the Undertaker knew what he was... Oh, excuse me. I don't, I'm not entirely convinced that the Undertaker knew what he was going to do in this match. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, even in his first autobiography, there's quite a few segments where he mentions that the match was supposed to start in the ring, which is look, where we're getting to yeah, at the moment. And look at the psychology here. Look at the way that Mick is building this up. He's gone to go in. He's looking around. He's thinking to himself, actually, I'm not going to start this here. Throws up the chair. Yeah. And then we see him start ascending the cage. Yes. Now, you've got to remember, guys, that this but is this back in the day before they started cutting out footholds for the ring. Uh, for the cage, sorry. Yeah. I think. Oh, it is, yeah. There's no holes in this. Isn't there? No, there is no. no holes. And this was also back in the day before the ring was fucking fixed to break. Could I uh, also... Sorry, the cage. Could I also just say, before we get to see what we know we're going to see... The worry in this match was the Undertaker. The Undertaker had a broken, broken foot. ankle or foot. Yes, yeah, broken foot. Because I only found that out recently. And here we go. We've gone dark. Every, yeah, we've all gone dark. The Undertaker's doing. We've heard the bell toll. A mix on the top of the cage in pure yeah. darkness. <laughs> it completely and uh, any other guy, I think, would be. I'm going to sit down here. I'm going <laughs> to stay still. If you, I mean, and I've watched this match God knows how many times. There are certain points when you can see flashing and the top of the cage is lit up. He's still walking around. Yeah. Like, there is so much shit you could trip over in that. Look at Taker's entrance, though, how fantastic that's, it is. That's phenomenal. That whole, I mean, the whole, 
I love the outfit. You, but if if you look, guys, you can actually see Taker's hobbling. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there is there is a worse one that comes for that, and I'll, God, we'll get to that later. I tell you what, Stu, that pyro is fucking close. I know. <laughs> Yeah, he's not had much luck with pyros in the past, has he? He certainly he? hasn't. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's, oh, fair play to him. Fair play to him. We are ed- edging ever closer to the ring at the moment. And you've got to admit, I, I love this era of The Undertaker more than any other era. Yes. The ho- He looked menacing. Yeah, this was just about the time where he was going to go ministry. Yeah. He was not there yet, but he yeah. was getting there. Um, yeah. Look at this. Look at this scene. It's, that shot is awesome. We are, you know, hopefully you guys are watching along with us. We are literally mere we, seconds away from the match starting, but you've got The Undertaker stood at the foot of the cage, about 10, 10 feet back away from it, and he's just staring up at Mick. And he's, he's not moving. He's staring him to come up. Yeah. That is it. I mean, the guy stood there with a the chair in hand, so you know straight away that he's going he's gonna, to, you know, he's going to get a wallop in as soon as he gets up there. Now and here we go, and you got to see with a broken foot. Oh, he's the consummate professional. That is, you can't fault the guy. You really can't. They had to be a little bit worried here that Taker might not have been able to get up there. Yeah. You know, walking... Look at that. Look at the way he has to get up. Yeah. You, you're talking about, a, you know, a, a cage mesh. Yeah. Now... And th- this is quite scary. And I, I've, I've, this is... Again, I'll get into why I said what I said about the Shawn Michaels Undertaker match. Shame on you. In a minute. <laughs> no, no I, I, this match is amazing. Fuck you, you're dead to me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. But for me, it's not... As great a match. Mm. Yeah. I, do you know what? I will give you... Yeah. Now, I, I just want to you... mention this. Now, obviously, this is new. Watch the cage break. Oh. Zip ties. And they are talking at this point in time. You saw them there. They're talking. They're going, holy shit. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, JR even actually does mention the fact that there are two 220, 230-pound guys who stand on one section of that cage and let's you can see you can see it buckling yeah they're zip ties that are holding that yeah. onto the frame zip ties are just meant to hold on Mix giving them the oh yeah. my oh, god oh, oh. oh shit do you know what oh. it's shocking to watch and if that was a oh, foot god if that was a foot Further. wrong I mean, you're looking at death, surely. Yeah. I'm not saying that horrible, but so, I mean, he would have landed on the ring, you know, now, the, the, what, yeah, what they call the, the barricades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. You've got, to, you've got to remember, folks, as well, that obviously we all know that these... And we ta- don't know how injured he is he's at not this down. point. That's the first no, time he no. was knocked out. If we're watching this live... Oh, right. Oh, yeah, right, right. Of course, yeah. Sorry. We don't know what's going on. Yeah. If we put yourself in the place of the... Of Jim Ross yeah. and everyone else, we have no idea what oh, state he yeah. is in. I just want to give a massive shout out as well to the Spanish announce table because fuck me, they moved quick. I want to give a massive shout out to the fucking announcer. Watch the like, announcer. Whoa. Now, we all know those tables are rigged to break. Yep. However, when they do that, they take the bloody monitors out of there. Yep. Those monitors were still in there. And at this point in time, we've now gone past wrestling. We have now gone past wrestling. Terry Funk has come out, and what you're going to see now is Vince come out as well. And this is this is while Vince, we have to remember, is Mister McMahon, the yeah. ultimate evil empire. Can, can we also state leader. at this point that Mick Foley has literally just gained consciousness, and he has dislocated his shoulder. Yeah. Now, oh. what a position for the Undertaker to be in. I mean, he's he's looking there and he's trying to look menacing, but he does not know what the fuck's going no. on. He's got, you know, a dear friend. Yep. Who has just been thrown off the top of a cage. Now, for someone who has and who does professionally 
stay in character, hats off to him, man. Because mm. to stay in character after doing something like that must be... Oh, I tell you Sorry, what, what an absolutely wonderful landing. I mean, he, oh, he turned that perfectly. I know he was knocked out. I know he's popped his shoulder out, but wow, <sighs> wow. Oh God! It's a work of art. The actual landing. I know yeah. that it's dangerous, and it sounds kind of sadistic for me to say, but. The way his body turns and it lands perfectly back first oh, onto the top of the announce table. It's, it's got to be... See, here's Vince. Now, this is, this is for me, really important because we have to remember that Vince is... Oh, God. Vince is supposed to be the most Sorry. evil heel yeah. in the company here and Vince yeah. is actually out. Uh, we've also, just to mention at this point, I'm pretty sure that's Al Snow out as well, isn't it? Out there? Yeah. It's Terry Funk, and that person is Francois Petit. Now, France. Is it? I I've always thought it was Al Snow. No, it's Francois Petit. Now, Francois Petit I do is the uh, physio, Charles. the physician. Mm. I, I'm not sure, but usually he's a physio. Right. That's what I've always heard. Uh, you see him an awful lot in the Attitude Era. Right. <sighs> see, I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here because yeah. I'm. As I'm getting older, I think I'm a bit more sort of caring in a yeah. way. I w would want... If I was watching this live, I'd want this to stop. Yeah, I'd want I'd this to stop. I yeah. would... I, I, I would... That's enough for me. You've entertained us yeah. enough. That's yeah. uh, that's it. No, look at Vince. That, that is the look of sheer panic. I think Vince is genuinely concerned. No, no, yeah, that's Nick. what I mean. Sorry, yeah, that is yeah. pure panic. Is he okay? Yeah. Now, I had recently, uh, literally a couple of weeks ago, um, I got my, my other half's um, two eldest sons. Um, they sat and watched this with me. Mm. They understand that the whole concept of wrestling, you know, it, you know, it's all stage. Predetermined this, stage. This, the other. They were horrified. Yes, yeah, very, very scary. I mean, I remember watching this live. Mm. I did on VHS. <laughs> Retro. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... So the moment we're in the R way... Yeah, mix we, on the stretcher. And we think this is over. This this is what it's looking like. <sighs> well... <sighs> Imagine that we're watching it for the first time this live. We don't even know what state mix in. We've just seen someone fall off at <sighs> least 15 to a Easily. 20 foot... Through an announce table... Hitting the concrete floor. You can see the panic on officials, guys. They've yeah. never, ever dealt with anything like no. this. No, and that's the key point. We hadn't. We never witnessed a match like this. I mm. also want to... Uh, I don't want to shit on the crowd, but I really think it's disrespectful at this point. Surely you think that someone might be injured to be chanting Undertaker? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've. Uh, I will say this, guys. We've got this on silent, so that's we, happened before. Yeah, we are now at the point where Mick has just decided to carry on, and he's climbing again, and we are going to see one of the most ugh, horrendous. Let's just wait for horrendous it. moments. Now, you imagine life. You have just seen, even if you're watching it at home, you've just seen a guy get thrown off of the top of the cage. Yeah. Now you're going to see something even worse. And I would like to point out as well, now I never noticed this until I'm watching mixed DVD. Here we go. Oh, my God. Ah. That was not meant to break. The point that Mick, Mick Foley brought up in his Greatest Hits and Misses DVD. Look at the people That's, belting that, yeah. down. When he slammed onto the cage and the top of the cage breaks, and I never realised this until Mick pointed it out, watch the chair. Yeah, it comes right down, hits him in the face. Yeah. That chair, he lands on the back of his head and momentum just pushes him straight through the cage and flips the chair over mm. until it's in front of his face and then hits him again. And, ah, oh, mate, that is, oh, that is painful. 
I, I find it shocking that someone said to Terry, buy him some time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How See, long is he going to be here right. for? This, this is the other thing that Mick's also mentioned in Shit, his book yeah. and as, as well as his Greatest Hits and Misses DVD. Now, at the point when Terry Funk takes a chokeslam by The Undertaker, Mick's out cold again. Yeah. And then when he comes to, the first it's thing he spots... The first thing he spots is a pair of trainers in the ring and he doesn't, he, you know, he, he just looks around and kind of goes... Where the fuck yeah, look those? at the chair, the way it comes oh, down. It comes yeah. down and it's... Straight in the mouth. Yep. Which, as uh, Billy Morgan commented on the on the Facebook page, you know... When that's, we, that's a man there who's completely uh, oh, he's, gone. The lights are on, but no one's home. Yep. Yeah. As Billy Morgan uh, quite rightly pointed out, um, and we never really see it up until the point where, you know, we all know the famous shot where he's crumpled in the corner... Uh, as Billy pointed out, we all kind of thought to start with that it was a big piece of snot or a or a bit of spit hanging off the end of his nose. What we didn't realise was that chair had knocked a tooth out oh, and pushed it, it up through his lip. That look on Mick's face is yeah. just... It's horrendous. But that smile when he's in the corner with the tooth hanging out of his nostril is one of the most iconic shots now of his entire career. Yeah, here it comes. I mean, a superhuman, I mean, just there that he actually goes, has the wherewithal yeah. to still be wrestling. and Yeah, that goes beyond the love of the craft. You know, we, we all know uh, The Undertaker is... Too far? What, for Mick? Honestly? <sighs> In my opinion... Ugh. The match should have the match should have stopped. Same. But we got what we've got what we got and we're very lucky to get that. And we and this is only what, five, ten minutes? Yeah. Five to ten minutes into it. And you have got two of the biggest bumps of Ever. professional wrestling history. Ever. Has anyone been able to top that? No, because they don't fucking want to. Only some stupid indie prats who try and do something. I mean, if you go on Jim Cornette's channel, guys, go and watch the indie fails. They're hilarious. Oh, right. it, see, this is, again... Well, he's, he, he's trying his yeah. hardest to... His, he's, his shoulder's still out. Yeah. And he's trying to lift up the stairs. And he just he just can't do it. But, but he still carries on. Take a kindly wax the uh, stairs shoulder. into yep. his shoulder. And again. I don't know if he's trying to somehow put it Pop back it in. Back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, ah, oh, I... Like, yeah. I wonder if that... Oh, I know it sounds God. stupid, but I wonder if that sort of crazy logic when you're in front of that crowd goes through your head. Like, maybe if I hit it, I can put it back in. Maybe I can help him push yeah. it back in. Oh, these, these are sick. Yeah. This oh, it is just... I, I almost get the feeling that Taker's trying to help... I know this sounds ridiculous, guys. Trying to help him by trying to sort of wake him up. Yeah. Like, Send those, a few those hits are yeah, like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to... Is that wake the fuck up? Yeah. Not in, a, not in a horrible way. Like, in a way, like, if we're still so, doing this... I'd like, find that painful to watch. That? Yeah. Yeah. Headbutt into the... I, you know... Uh, it ain't pretty. I can tell you I don't this. I know he puts his hand up. It's it, but he, no. I can tell you that. this because obviously the other guys are going to have the advantage to me. But there's someone in the crowd who audibly says, "You're ruining the cage, man!" After he does it, <laughs> which always makes me laugh. But you can't. And I know Mick has stated many times that this is not his favourite match of his whole career, but it's the one that everyone remembers him for. Yeah, uh, you, again, it's 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 why I go down the narrative of, uh, again, I'm not going to do this too much because we're going to yeah. talk about it after yeah. the first Hell in a Cell match. Yeah, 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 yeah. But and I'll talk about Jonathan Coates' comments as well. Yeah, but you can't, you can't take anything away from this. I know, every, you know, once we get past the original throw off the top of the cage, we get to the choke slam through the cage. Um, not a great deal happens after that, but you've got to... <laughs> You've got to remember, Mick Foley's been knocked out twice. He's had a tooth pushed through yeah. his lip. He's had a dislocated shoulder, and I'm pretty sure he cracked ribs in this as well. What He's trust had, of the Undertaker in the state that Mick yeah, is in to a land Severe concussion, and he has still pulled out. The Undertaker is now bleeding from the, bleeding from the head. He's got a broken foot. Can you honestly tell me that there are any performers now 
that will put themselves through this much shit. That's just a different time. To put on a show yep. for the fans. I don't think there is. No, there isn't. And there will never be. I bet that was horrendous. Yeah. I bet that hurt. You've got to love these two. Mm. You've got to love the match. Ah, oh, yeah. I love the match. I love the match. It's the older. It's the older me that looks at it like Jesus Christ, yeah. guys. What we what we used to watch back in the day, compare it to now, is just so tame. Mm. So so tame. Hats off to both of them. Like, no. I'm now just thinking of like mixed health. Yeah. If, if I'm watching is. this and it's and it's me now. Yeah. I'm thinking of mixed health and I'm thinking, please don't have internal injuries mm. to the head. Please. Yeah. You know. Oh, and then we then we see his bag of goodies. Now we all know what's coming. Mm. We all know this is one of Mick's favourites. Um, I'm going to give um, a huge pop to the ref. Who actually does the count on Who, it. Yeah. Uh, it happened, funnily enough, it happens to, I think it's Earl Hebner in the Royal Rumble 2000 yeah, match yeah, as well. Yeah, Because you got to admit, you got, you got to admit, going through your head when someone goes for a count and you're looking at him waiting for the count, you're going, oh, for fuck's I, I sake. Wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking count. But I does, count with my foot. In, in between, he must have gone, <laughs> ah, Shit. Fuck! That actually wouldn't be bad creatively. <laughs> if the referee counted with his foot, yeah. it might sell like the extreme of it. Do more. it on your thigh. Yeah. One, two. Oh, he kicked out, thank God. <laughs> We're now getting the, the tussling match. Who's yeah. going to go in? Yeah, yeah. And you don't, s- don't you think, though, that there should have been an audible call at this point for the Undertaker to go in? Yeah. Yeah. You Absolutely. know, I would have... I would have... I would have called it in the ring and gone, I'll go for him. Yeah. I think, <laughs> Mick, I think you've gone through enough by yeah. this point. Do you want me to go in the in the thumbtacks? Nah, mate, I've got this. Mate, no. <laughs> Just no. By that point, I'd be like, mate, take it. I don't care. I think I've done enough for this match. It is, you've got to admit as well, for the amount of shit that Mick Foley put himself through for such a, for such a long, illustrious career, it is a fucking miracle he oh, went for as long it, as he it, did. It's amazing. Like we said, this match should have ended after the first one. This should have ended a career. Yeah. It should have ended a career. Again, uh, again, I'm a massive fan of The Undertaker, but I just yeah. don't get this. I think that Taker that should have gone through them. And then the role. See, like... He's <laughs> like... It's just... <laughs> It's not sadistic. It's like he, you can see why people say he likes pain. I mean, he loves to give the crowd what they pay their hard earned money for. But when you watch it, you can see why people yeah. do say it because yeah. it's like it's not good enough for Mick just to fall in them. He has to roll in them yeah. too. And here we come to the choke slam on him as well. Oh, oh, for God's sake. As if the first yeah, one weren't that, bad enough. That, that anguished sort of look there or audible I, it's just I would horrible. just like to point out that on his back the, the pins are quite scattered but he has a lot of them clumped together on his ass. yeah he also has a lot of them on his fucking feet I yeah. don't know if they're actually going through but I fucking hope not and, and see that sums it up for, you know I'm real that, that that attempt at a kick out towards the end now oh, me yeah, the- personally I believe he was trying but by that point... Yeah, but that's the mark of... You, you hear a lot of professionals who turn around and say, for realism, as much as you're hurt... Mm. And this go, this doesn't just go for this match. This goes for any match. Always make it look as if you try and kick out because yeah. it's meant to be a competition. Yeah. And he does. Mm. He sells well, his Well, he craft. still gives it. He, Even yeah. through that, still oh, the yeah, leg yeah. comes up as if to go, I'm trying... Yeah, I think that guy, and if you can help me, guys, I think that guy's name is Francois Petit. It is, even now, I mean, we are in 2022, and this match was in, uh, sorry, 1999. 
1998. Sorry, 1998. Yes. Sorry. Um, even now, to uh, see I, Mick, I, Mick I in the ring. I actually find it hard to watch. Yeah. Uh, I just looked at his eyes and I yeah. was like, God. There is there is a massive part of me that he's going, mate, well done. Well done. But there is an even bigger part of me that he's going, I fucking hope to God you're all right. Yeah. Now, my, now, now we know now he is, you know, we all know that. We know that's why I, That's why I said to you, take yourself back yeah. into watching this for the first time. Would you, would it, well, in watching it for the first time, Stu, mm. would you want it to continue? Sh- shit, no. 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 And this is like, you know, as I was saying, where my other half's eldest two, they watched it with me a couple of weeks ago. And um, and at the point where he was being, you know, as we all know, when Mick Foley was being uh, put on the stretcher and being wheeled up the uh, at the ramp and the fact that he gets up, sorts himself out, even with a dislocated shoulder still and, and a ma- obviously a major concussion and recently being knocked out, he gets back up and walks into the ring and both of them just went, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, too much, no, nah. you know. It is a tough watch. It is a tough watch, but, you know... Oh, no, I still enjoy it. Yeah. I still enjoy it, but there's there's a part of me that watches it... Yeah. ...and, and understands why this sort of thing has been outlawed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, if you look at that there on the replay, if that goes a f- just a foot wrong... Yeah, if he hadn't timed his roll... Yep. A split and, and, second later... <clears throat> you know, we, we... Well, what can we say? If... <sighs> We'd be without a major star yeah. and an absolute icon and a legend in professional wrestling. Um, it is a true testament to uh, Mick Foley and The Undertaker, not only as performers and wrestlers and characters, mm. not just in the ring, but outside of the ring. It is a true testament to their love of the craft and what they are willing to do as fans. See, I would put this more as a match that's almost superhuman yeah in terms of someone being able to take pain rather than a good match yeah 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 Yeah. that's what I'm trying to say I think it's more of a testament to someone who is willing to risk it all for everybody than an actual good technical wrestling match I think that doesn't take away from it, guys. Yeah. I think it depends on which one you see as more important. Yeah. I personally do see, I maybe see the fact that Mick's willing to give it his all yeah. as more important. And it's I just wanting to state, as well, at the, by this point, if you, you know, you guys are watching along with us. You can see Terry fan cast yeah. skin. Yeah, damn right. And I said, that is absolutely damn right. Let's give it up for him. Mm-hmm. And the fact as well that he refused to go out on the stretcher, he wanted to go out on his feet and go out up that ramp on his own terms. I mean, what's, let's face what's it. What's the word? The test of human in, human endeavour? In, yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I think it's more that. Like, when I say about the Shawn Michaels Undertaker match, mm. that's a better match. This is more of a testament to the human's it's a human endeavour to yeah, like yeah. how somebody will give you their all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, there we have it. Shocking. Just seeing Jerry Lola actually holding the thumbtacks. <laughs> yeah. What- He's even being careful with them there, look. Mm. It's a true testament as well to the characters, you know, of uh, Jerry Lola and JR. The commentary for that was immense purely mm. because of obviously what had happened you know and there this is somebody that they will work alongside with as well this is again also mick foley and jr very very good friends jr is having to watch one of his friends be put through shit that no human should have to go through in a and ring. he has no idea if he's all no, right absolutely none so um yeah that's okay there uh, yeah yeah there we go folks um it's an it's it's a timeless match yeah Absolutely. Wherever you stand on it, it's it's always going to be played throughout yeah. history. It's yeah, it's it's going to be remembered for all the rights, all the wrongs, and all the in betweens. It, it is a classic, regardless. You know, it may not be the greatest wrestling match of all time, 
but it is going to be it's going to stand the test of time in some people's mind it is and yeah. I, I can understand why you're bringing the realism factor into it and going the fact that Mick can still do this yeah. Yeah, yeah. is unbelievable I can understand it from that point of view from my point of view I give the most and that's what I'm saying the most amazing props to that yeah. like it's unreal and there's no bigger apart from you probably no bigger Mick Foley fan than me I absolutely love Mick Foley it's not, it's not got the, a fucking flannel shirt on mate have you <laughs> But again, maybe we can do that one <coughs> at some point. Uh, Shawn Michaels and the yeah, Undertaker absolutely. match. Yeah, man. Yeah. The first one is better. Yeah. That one is more iconic. That's yeah. probably the best way of putting Should it, actually. Give it a couple of months' time. We'll put up another vote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, as always, folks, we've had a couple. We've had a couple of people that have put, uh, that had mentioned comments about this match. Um, and once this once this episode goes up to be. Um, to be streamed we'd love to hear your thoughts about it we'd love to hear your thoughts about the review uh, you know the rewatch section alone as well that'd be absolutely brilliant so um we'll go on to our uh news. next yeah we'll go it's on to the news, news isn't it yeah we will go on to um our little discussion session now obviously we've you know in the last re- in the few last few recent weeks we've heard about the situations between uh wwe sasha banks and naomi this is this is really going to be a tough one to talk about, to be honest, because there's been so much speculation and so many different stories that are floating around. I, d- I don't really, I don't really know. I, I don't know. What, what do you say? Like, I don't know where I stand. I do. Um, I'm, I'm on the fence with this one. I really am. I'm, yeah, completely on the fence. So go for it, mate. Go for it. If you, you, you want to head up on this one, absolutely. And I'll, um, I'm I'll get... try and fucking jump in when I can. I'm going to get hated. So where I stand on it is, guys, I think that WWE have every right to indefinitely suspend them. <sighs> Do you know, as a comparison, uh, I brought this up a few months back uh, when we were talking about Charlotte Flair and Nia Jax mm-hmm. and the unprofessionalism. Yep. Now, I'm pretty sure, as I stated, that shit does not belong. When you're a when you're in a company like WWE, you you are in the pinnacle company. Mm-hmm. You are at the peak. Yep. Right. This is literally my only input on this one. I, w- I will be honest. If you're going to act like a fucking spoiled brat mm-hmm. in the ring, like those two did, the fucking pair of them should have gone. Not yep. fired, but you should have been suspended. Yeah, I reprimand this. I totally agree. Now, we all know Sasha Banks is quite renowned for throwing her toys out of the pram. We've talked about that many times. Yep, we have. We all know this is true. We've all read enough articles that have, you know, proven this fact. We've, you know, seen her episode when she's on uh, Steve Austin's podcast. Didn't portray her in a great light. For me personally. No, I'll agree with you. I will, yeah, I will 100% I, 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 agree with you on that one. I haven't spoke to enough people to know if they um, felt the same. They should be suspended. You've, I I get where they're coming from. I really do. I, you know, the whole issues with the women's tag team division. Yeah, I get your point. But you've gone the wrong way about it. You, you've acted like a couple of petulant teenagers. Now, that shit doesn't belong in a professional industry. If you're going to do that, you're just going to make yourself look like a twat. Doesn't belong from any employee or independent worker no. anywhere. If I, if you know, if I go into my job and say oh, I don't think any of the rest of the lot are as good as I am, I'm you know, fuck your job title, but I still want to keep my job. What would what would my bosses do? See you fucking later. Off you what go. What would your bosses do in your normal job? We'd fucking you know you'd be you'd be suspended. I think you'd be sacked. Well, there is that you know, but there'd be there'd be a you know. Uh, a disciplinary procedure well, action, certainly. you know, but the outcome would be fuck off. I think sometimes we uh-huh. get so wrapped up in the fact of the popularity. I think what we yeah. have to realise is that this is a business, and that's that. Yeah, that's see, that's the key word. It is a business, and these are performers, yeah, guys. Yes, they do want creative. Uh, benefits with those tag team titles that's fine yeah 
that doesn't give you the right to walk out on the kids yeah. in the stadium who absolutely idolise you. And the same goes with someone like Austin, yeah. who's who has actually admitted we all agree with him that the creative was awful. Yeah. But he should have never walked out on the audience. It's a massive insult to the, not just the fans, but like you touched upon then, there are millions, I would say, millions of young girls and young women who look up to the, these two as role models. You are you are setting a bad example. I get there's a lot of you know love and support for them for what they've done. I I, I do I do understand that, and I'm I'm desperately desperately trying to come across like I'm not shitting on them I'm not I'm just I'm just putting a you know a, a, a perspective on it you have got those millions of kids around the world young girls in particular who are into the wrestling industry who want to get into the wrestling industry and have just seen their idols go fuck this I'm better than that I'm better than you I'm better than her yep. what message does that send what message does it send if you do not discipline it yeah right you may not agree with the creative and you may all like Sasha, just like I liked Austin. Yeah. And everything like that. But the boss is the boss, whether yeah. anyone likes that or not. And that's not using her, you know, Sasha's nickname, the boss. We are we are talking about Vince here. Yeah. Vince McMahon is the boss. And whether you agree with his setup, whether you agree with his storyline, where whether you agree Which with his don't. longevity. Yeah, which currently we don't we've we've shit on the story writing for for months now, and it's still not getting anywhere. And you've had I, I was going to say you've got two top performers. You've got one top performer, Naomi's. You know she's no way in it, and it's not me shitting on her either. But she's not. She's not up there. She's not a main event star anymore. She is relying now, and again, this is such a controversial subject, and people may disagree with me on this. She's relying now on the power of the Usos, yeah. or specifically her husband, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's Jimmy, mm. to have some pull in this situation. Because <laughs> Sasha can, I mean, Sasha's a big star, and Sasha can maybe worm her way out of it eventually, yeah. like she has done before. Yeah, Naomi's yeah. an easy fall. Mm. Yeah, she's an easy foal. She's she I, is easily. So I I do feel sorry for her because I think she's been suckered into this. Well, we talked about the horsewomen before. Yeah, yeah. And the top, is Naomi thinking to herself I'm because of the well. USO mm. power at the moment? <sighs> is is Naomi thinking I've got power because yeah. of Jimmy? But, but then it goes a bit further. Without Roman, what are they? But what if what if the what if Jimmy now yeah. decided to take a stand and leave? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> because you've yeah. got that free, the bloodline. Yeah, yeah. And it goes. Yeah. And straight away. <laughs> is Naomi thinking that way? If she is, <sighs> it's a bad move. It it's also move. insulting to us, the audience guys. I'll give you an example. So, match that you were really looking forward to, Stu, yeah. right? MJF and CM Punk. Yeah. CM Punk doesn't like the fact that he's going to lose. Yeah. You've gone and bought a ticket. Yeah. You'd have CM Punk, so your first chance to go and yeah. see him. He decides, I'm not going to do this, fuck it, I'm not turning up. Yeah. How'd I'll you be, feel? I'd be fucking livid. Okay. That'd be, for me as a fan, if he'd have done that, and which, and let's, you know, to be fair, you, you picked the right person there. Punk's done it. Punk's walked. But he's not what he's not walked out before a match. Yeah. But Punk did it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Now you know, whether you agree with it or not, we know he was injury wise, he was fucking suffering. Yes. But obviously there was backstage politics, there was heat. This, that, and the other. Uh, you know. Whether you or not agree with his reasons for doing it, me personally, I I love punk, I really do. Do I believe what he did was right? Not really. No, I I, I can I can sympathise with punk. I 
Be- and the reason I can sympathise with Punk because there was no creative for him up until yeah. th- what I'm what I'm trying to get at is they'd already booked a match. Yeah. These six were just going to be in a six pack challenge. Yeah. It's a fucking raw match. Yeah. Right. Now I've heard the creative was going to be that Sasha and Naomi were going to be that. There's so many different stories. I'm not sure what's true. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm just going to go into this one. Right. So one of them was that Sasha wasn't happy that Naomi was going to pin her. Yeah. And then that diminishes their yeah, relationship yeah. in the tag that's, team. That's, that's one I heard. Yeah. But if if that is the case, get. Fucking over yourself. Yeah, and also there's there's some very there's some actual really good creative stuff that can come out of that. Damn right. You can have the scenario where because we know Sasha's background, is she gonna turn? Yeah. Isn't she gonna you can easily do that. She <laughs> but still have <laughs> Can, can we? I'm just there's just one thing I wanted to interject there with because you've obviously you know said about Sasha and the heel turns this that and the other. Yeah, she is like the female equivalent of the Big Show. Yeah, she has turned heel to face to heel to face. Pro- I'm going to say probably about the same amount of fucking times he has. Yeah, right. I like it's Sasha Simrin work. I do. I, I, I do. She's a and, good performer. She's a brilliant performer. But I reckon she's a mega pain in the ass to deal with. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And I think the other two, like we've said before, I think the other two are as well. I think that uh, Charlotte and yeah. Becky are. Yeah. Now, which, I mean... It, I'll, I'll give you an analogy, Stu. It kind of reminds me, the whole situation of the power thing with Shawn Michaels and Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good comparison. You know, yeah. like how Becky and Charlotte are acting. I don't like her. First, they're friends. Now, they're, there's professional jealousy. Now, there's this. Now, there's that. Yeah. I hate to tell everyone this. As much as we love pro wrestling, we love the craft, you don't actually win a title through your physical merit. Yeah. There's a lot of things involved. That's one of them. But you are anointed a champion. Yeah. You are not actually... You're anointed by the company a yeah. champion. You are no more, really, and I don't mean to sound this disrespectful to wrestling, because I love wrestling. You are no more like a movie star. Say there's a hero and a bad guy, right? Can you imagine if one of the actors on on, on the set turns around and hears the end of the script is going to be, yeah. you're going to get killed by the yeah. hero, and they go, no, nah, sorry, that doesn't work for me, and walks out. Yeah. Do you know what the best example of that is? And I only found this out recently. So, The Usual Suspects. Mm. Right, we all know. It's a phenomenal film. I'm sorry to bring this in on a tangent, but it's the... It's the I've, I've only recently heard this and read about this. And um, for those of you that haven't seen The Usual Suspects, I'd skip this section because I'm about to ruin a fucking amazing film. So, we all know the ending. You know, it was basically a load of bullshit that Kevin Spacey's character, Verbal Kin, you know... Con- concocted one of the greatest fucking lies in criminal history. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gabriel Byrne, his character. <laughs> now, when Gabriel Byrne found out what the ending was when he watched it, he was fucking furious. I never knew that. Yeah, genuine. He was fucking furious because he was led to believe at making this film he was the star and the villain. And then upon watching the film, he finds out it was complete bullshit and it was Verbal Kint that concocted the whole storyline and he was Kaiser Soze. How fucking dare you? Get sh- this is the same thing. How fucking yes. dare you? Yes, it is. Get over yourself. Yep. Yes, it is. There are... There's, um, there's, there, you're looking at the women's division at the moment. You have got a lot of fucking great stars there. You've also got people that would be... Would honoured. Abso- yeah, I'm absolutely honoured and see it as a privilege to be in those two's position. You've got release talent, guys. I mean, You've got I'm- people who have been released who would love yeah. anything more than to be a champion. I am going to name one straight away off the top of my hat, and I fucking damn well know you're going to know where I'm going with this. I know exactly where you're going. Liv Morgan. Never been a champion. Never held a title. Criminal. I mean, I know she was tag team title. Tag, was she tag team title holders with Rhea Ripley oh. recently? No, they, they didn't split. win. Did they? Oh no, no, no. That's right. That's right. Right. Yeah, but what? What? Okay. Let's Again, make the analogy. You've got them two together. Let's make the analogy there then. 
right? Let's make the analogy there. Leaf, right, and Rhea decide they don't like that they're not winning the title, so they walk out. I'd, I'd, I'd bet money they'd have been sacked. But it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. There are so many amazing performers in this women's division that would give their fucking right arm to be in that position. And I'm I'm, I'm starting to get annoyed at myself because I'm... You're like, starting to see my point. Though. Yeah, That's I am, what's to be fair. I am actually, yeah. And I'm actually going to take my original um, statement of I'm on the fence back to, do you know what? Fuck it. I am with you, James. I am. Yeah, you have convinced me on that. Yeah, I, th- I, I don't think it's me convincing you. I think it's common sense. Yeah, I it's, think it's, we it's know. Talking I, about it, you know, the, uh, the longer I'm talking about it, it's a the privileged more, position. Yeah, I'm now seeing it. I mean, I'm a fan anyway. You know that. Yeah, we all know that. We're here for the love of wrestling. Yep. If you're gonna, and it is, if you're gonna shit on the fans like that, then you deserve everything you get. And the dressing room. Yeah. And the dressing room. I mean. That is not the only rumour that's out there, guys. There's another rumour about Nikki Ash out there that I heard. Mm, I've not heard this one. And yeah, there's oh. stuff in about they didn't want to work with her. Yes, her and Shayna Baszler, I heard. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's Dewdrop as well. It might have been Shayna. Mm. But uh, you know you know the actual match? Yeah, yeah. They, You know the, the, the apparent we're not happy because yeah. someone's dangerous? Yeah. I think Are they... Are you fucking kidding me? That's, They're seasoned. That's what I heard. Right. But that's how many rumours are out there. Oh, fuck. Bollocks. The bottom, li- the bottom line for me mm. in the whole situation is get out there, have the match, do the fucking crowd. I mean, oh, my God, I feel so sorry for you two. What are you going to do? Go on a pay-per-view and be in Hell in a Cell and be in the title match, both of you, are going to be in singles title matches, you can come together afterwards yeah. and hash this out with Vince and go, now we want to concentrate on the tag team division. Right? Oh. And do that. Mm. If you have that much impetus that you want that tag team division to mean something, then work for then it. Then work it out after. Though funny you should mention Helen in a Cell, and obviously two people that we've mentioned recently, that's the rumour I've heard for a possible women's Helen in a Cell match. What's that? Is Liv and Rhea. Yeah, that would make sense. If that happens, I think you're onto something fucking special. Yeah, I I mean, Hell in a Cell, who, who is, who's Reigns facing? Is he not facing anyone? I don't think there is any storyline at the moment regarding him for a Hell in a Cell I've match. I've heard rumours of Riddle. <laughs> Uh, we'll cover that some other day. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I've heard. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm 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 all I'm all done on this subject for this one. The bottom line for me is the cardinal sin is to walk out on the crowds and the yeah. audience that you well has basically made you, and it doesn't matter if you're Steve Austin, who yeah. has always said that is the worst thing he ever did in his career. You know, even someone at that level, it is wrong. You got to think from and, and if this this is the last bit I want to put into this. Like mm-hmm. I said, with the whole you know young kids being fans and that, it's not just the young kids who are the fans. You know, these young kids they want to buy a t shirt with your face on it. The parents are working their asses off. Some 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 parents aren't as you know as financially stable as a lot of other parents in the world. You know, and have to work their fucking asses off to earn you know twenty thirty quid or twenty thirty dollars or wherever you are in the world, to go and buy a T-shirt with Sasha Banks' face on. How fucking dare you? Yeah. I totally agree with you. How dare I, you? I think people look at this and they're looking at it like, uh, Vince is the big corporate man and this. They haven't just shit on Vince, guys. They've shit By the doing fans. that, they shit on the fans. You know, they do. Mm. It's There's no two ways about that. If you go, oh, I stand with, with them... I bet you weren't some of the people who were in the audience who bought a ticket to see them. No. No. And tickets Especially if you... Tickets ain't fucking cheap. They're not. Cash at the castle. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, let's bring that into an analogy. Okay, so, I mean, who 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 would we say? Let's, let's pick someone out. So, let's do the main event. So, yeah. Roman... And Drew is rumoured to be the main event. And I think we can pretty much say that that probably will be the main event. Are we talking 
Clash at the Castle, now, yeah? Yes. All right, cool. I, I think that will... I, mean, I was like, where the fuck is he going with it? <laughs> I, I said about Clash at the Castle. We're now talking about Clash at the Castle. Yeah, I, I did say about it, I think. Sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, no, I said, let's talk about where we're going. Yeah. In other words, Clash at the Castle. So we pay quite a bit for our tickets, mm. right? So let's say, hypothetically, because it's most slightly, apart from if Tyson Fury somehow gets involved... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. That makes yeah. the most sense. Yeah. Let's just say that they decide Drew should win. Mm-hmm. And we've paid for a ticket. This is the main event. Yeah. And Roman turns around and goes, fuck that, I ain't doing it, I ain't going. We don't get a main event. Yeah. How do you feel sitting there? I would be fucking furious and I would be demanding my fucking money back. There you go. Yeah. And what does it... Uh, and, and you've also let down your peers. You've let yeah. down everyone in the dressing room. Yeah. So, so, I mean, like, financially, I mean, the ticket, the tickets ain't fucking cheap, man. No. I mean, 1800 for a front row seat. Yeah. You know, I I'm mean, co- I think some of them, actually at ringside, like straight on at ringside, are about £4,000. Yeah. Shame on you two. Anyway... Yeah. Let's go on to a couple of other I wanna, subjects. I, I, again, I just quickly want to just say this. I don't want to bash them too hard. Mm. Like, obviously... I think it's a bit I, late for that. I don't, <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't I, yeah. I don't know all the circumstances. No, no. no. And I really don't. But if the circumstances are what they are, yeah. then my opinion still stands with you've let those... Kids in the crowd down. Yeah, massively. And, and you've let your peers down. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. The belts, I'm sorry, the bottom line is as much as we love wrestling, you don't really win those belts in an actual wrestling fight. No. You don't. No. I think that's a perfect place to win that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a privileged um, position. We're going to go on to a bit more uh, light-hearted, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to make James's face fucking crumple up when I say this. Rick Flair's going to have one more match. Uh, is he still having it? Uh, pff, as far as I know. Has it been changed now? I don't know. Because Rick is saying he ain't. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and good on him. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> But you know, someone else has said they're going to have one last match. Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone want to watch it? I heard it was good. Wasn't it posted in the group that it was going to be Hogan and Flair? Yeah, I posted that. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. Anyone give a shit? No one wanted to see that 30 no. to 35 years ago. <laughs> I, will, I will give... Well, they did actually. That's a lie. Yeah. Maybe I, 20 that, years ago. I, I will give comment... Uh, sorry, uh, props to everyone that put a comment in that section uh, when I posted that on the Facebook page. There were some fucking hilarious comments in there. Was it? Uh, I think Jolly put Viagra on a bring back the Viagra on a pole match. Um, there was a wheelchair match. I, I didn't. I didn't. I put a casket match. I didn't even want to get fucking involved. Oh, I'd have put. Brilliant. I'd have put something really. It's bad. been. A, it's been a while since I've laughed that hard at a feet. Yeah, fucking hell. Um, hey, ah, pay per view that's coming up very soon. Uh, AEW's AEW's Double or Nothing. Yep. I, for one, am really looking forward to this. Yeah, it looks good. The card's good. The card is absolutely amazing. And we're, once again, once again, we're seeing an awesome feud from MJF. Yep. That guy is gold. Oh, God. I mean, we've got... I'm just going to read off... um, a few of the matches. These aren't all certified. Um, I'm sure, as our good friend Jonathan Cook pointed out, um, there's been a few more that's added recently. So uh, whether you like these guys or not, the Hardys, they have had great matches in the past with the Young Bucks. And I, for one, I'm looking forward to that. They're an iconic tag team, yeah. the Hardys. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely um, amazing. What else have you got? We have the Jericho Appreciation Society. I love the work they're doing at the moment. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> You've got the Jericho Appreciation Society against John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Santana Ortiz, and the fucking awesome Eddie Kingston. Yep. Brilliant. Be great. As I said, MJF versus Wardlow. 
this feud's brilliant. I mean, MJF is coming off the back of a brilliant feud with CM Punk, going straight into once again another phenomenal feud. And he'll always have brilliant feuds because he is yep. a natural heat seeking heel. Yep. Uh, what else we have? Uh, Anna J versus Jade, Jade Cargill. Yeah, I, I personally, I don't know about you, I don't think that their women's division is as strong as WWE. No, I'm, I'm going to state that. I think, and I'll put this on there, um, I think Impact has got the strongest women's division at the moment. I think it's close. I just think WWE have got such an array there. I think there's some people who you can turn around and go, yeah, I don't like that one, I don't like that one, but you can easily replace them yeah. with another. Yeah. Like stand, standout performers, and I'm pretty sure uh, it was Billy Morgan that uh, pointed this out, and I'm in 100% agreement, uh, Jordan Grace. The yes, impact very good. is amazing, absolutely amazing performer. If any of you haven't actually witnessed any of her work or seen any of her matches, go on YouTube, just type her name in, watch. She is an absolute powerhouse. Yeah, brilliant performer. Um, we've also got this one. I'm really looking forward to. It's the Death Triangle versus the House of Black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what more can you say? It's. it's I, I really do think they cater for our age. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our the former Attitude Era. Yeah. Indie. Yeah. Sort of circuit. old school fans, like you said, old school fans. Yeah. And then you've obviously got, we all know this is a pay-per-view. Uh, it is Hangman Page versus my boy, CM Punk. Who do you want to win that? Punk. Okay. I love Page, I really do. But we we touched on this briefly before. We, uh, I think his first time nerves um, have kind of got the better of Page. And don't get me wrong, Page and Punk at the moment, they've had some brilliant exchanges of words um, with their promos. I think it would do Paige the world a good to get a victory over Punk. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, 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 I really I would do. I agree with that. I don't think Punk needs the title. I'd Not love at the see, moment. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Um, but the guy at the moment I want to see as a champion, if I'm really, really honest, is Wardlow. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see MJF get hold of that title. I would at some point. If Wardlow got the title, I'd love to see MJF beat him for it. I'd like to see MJF get it. Mm. Because I just think that the arrogance level would go up even more with oh, the yeah. belt around him. Oh, and I, oh. think you'd be, I think we'd be dealing with something really special. I think you'd have a merge of someone like Rick Rude and uh, uh, Mr. Perfect. Mm. I think you could have the potential to have never seen anyone like it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. My absolute favourite news of this week in general for professional wrestling, and this is a massive, massive deal for me. Huge, monumental deal for me. Danhausen is finally getting an action figure. Awesome. <laughs> Take my fucking money. I, I fucking love Dan. Take Housen. my money. <laughs> He was on my radar ages ago before when he was an indie. You told me about him. Yeah, I I used to I used to find it interesting to go. I don't know why I fucking found this interesting, mate. I used to find it interesting to go on Cameo and see who was on there. Yeah. And his face always seemed to <laughs> make me want to click to see yeah. who he was. It's a proper click uh, clickbait, isn't it? Yeah, because I was like when I first saw you know the the character on there. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And then I started watching the cameos and I was like, this is fucking great. Yeah. Uh, I just <laughs> thought he was, I just thought he was amazing. Yeah. He was on my radar like really early. I could sit here for a good couple of hours and tell people how much I love Dan Housen. Yeah. I really do. I, I still, love him. I still have issues with him wrestling. I still do. <laughs> So I I do find him a good performer. He's I've like, watched a lot yeah. of his, you know, his indie work, a lot of his work with Ring of Honor, with his, you know, his feud with Brian Johnson or John Stone. Yeah. <laughs> I think the reason I say that though, I think you probably you probably would understand where I'm coming from. I'm a big fan of managers. Yeah. And I think it's a lost start. And I think he has the ability to be I don't think he needs to wrestle. Well, 
See, funny you should say that. You I know, think he's a good manager. I've, and I'm pretty sure I, I mentioned this before on a previous episode. So I think it's monthly. Um, you, you know, I think you can vote on a daily basis anyway. For AEW, they have like the fans' favourite poll. Who, who's like the biggest name going? And I'm pretty sure for like a couple of months, Danhausen's been number two or number three. Yep. And he hadn't by this point even had a match. All he'd done was get dragged out by a chair by Adam Cole. Bay bay, <laughs> yeah. and and come out with the th- with the th- half the thumb up against the young bucks when Orange Cassidy went under the ring and put a curse on him. I, just, think, I think that, done I think I think that reinforces my point. Yeah, true. Yeah. But this, this is what I'd love to see with him and Hook. I'd like to see him as Hook. Oh, sorry, Hook hasn't. Yeah. I, do you know what? I'd like Hook Harrison to exist, but mm. I'd like to see Dan Harrison for a little while as his manager. I think it'd be fucking brilliant. So do I. I think it'd be it. better as, than him as a tag partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, think yeah. that if you put Dan Helson, this is such a weird fucking dynamic. <laughs> I think if you put Dan Helson, but Hook just takes to him, and it's, you have like on paper, it shouldn't fucking work. Yeah, but I think it would work <laughs> if he's on the outside. I think yeah. it would be fucking goals. Because you know you could get to the point when you know obviously uh, Hook's going to put him in the put his opponent in the sleeper, yeah. choke him out, and you, all you can hear in the background is. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but I could see something happening. This is what I would like to see. I'd like to see something like Hook being the cold bloody motherfucker he is, yeah. but Dan Helson may be doing something wrong, mm. right? Like, say he tries to pull down the ropes, he accidentally pulls down, uh, da- them down on Hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead of Hook turning on him, Hook just turns a blind eye all the time. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, I, I and do you that. know what? I wouldn't... We were talking about this the other day, about the Riddle and Orton situation. We won't talk about them, but you don't always have to break people up. No. No. That uh, never yeah. used to happen. No. You know, you don't need to break people up. You could have a really weird dynamic with Hook and Danhausen where he it's tries to help it's something him. something unique. Yeah, he tries to help him and he doesn't help, but that's his only soft spot. Like, it's something that maybe people could exploit. Yeah. Like, Hook comes across as, like, unbeatable, mm. but maybe someone gets hold of Danhausen and beats the fuck out yeah. of them. Yeah, And that... It's the trigger. Eat, make some eat teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but can you see what I mean? That's the yeah, trigger for, for Hook. Yeah. That's the emotional yeah. hook that you we see a bit of emotion there. Like, yeah. you've just nearly half killed my friend. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to kill you. You can have that sad yeah. emotion and yeah. that anger. And then put a curse on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that would work. Yeah. I've, I think that would be a really, really good dynamic. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Mm. Love that, Dan Housen. Yeah, I do. <laughs> right, we're going to go on to our final topic now. Uh, well, it's not even a topic, so we're going to announce the competition prize. Okay. So three I'll count- leave this to you. Yeah, all right, no worries. Yep. Three, three Counts Wrestling Merchandise have given us a mystery box. Um, that mystery box contains T-shirt, figures, a DVD. You've got a lot of good stuff in there. A lot of good stuff in there. If you want to see the full description of it, um, it is on the link that I posted on the uh, Facebook page. Please go and have a look. Look at everything else on there. Uh, you know, three counts wrestling merchandise. Fucking outstanding. Can't thank you guys enough once again. And as I stated in the post, the question was, who performs CM Punk's This Fire music? And the answer is, fucking know everybody got this one, right? I... I- can I just say, just quick, am, yes, am I allowed to fucking enter? No. No, I didn't think I was. We, I we, we as hosts cannot enter. Yes, yeah, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you'd like to send us some goodies, it would be very much appreciated. I think I'm pushing me fucking luck there, mate, yeah, to be honest. That's, that's why I didn't fucking enter. <laughs> Don't want to rock the boat on our first competition and we'll get dropped next week. <laughs> So, yeah, the question was, who, which band performs CM Punk's This Fire Music? And the answer is, ironically, I mentioned it earlier for my number one choice, the Crowd Pops. It is, of course, the outstanding Killswitch Engage. 
Now, here comes the next part, James. You have to pick a number between one and 13. 13 people entered this competition and I want you to pick a number between one and 13. So on the count of three, name one. One, two, seven. three. Fucking hell, I didn't even finish then. Number seven. seven. The winner is Kevin Coote. Congratulations, Kevin. We will be in touch with uh, three, counts wrestling, uh, three Counts Wrestling merchandise. Um, if you'd like to drop us a private message, myself or James, we will get your address and everything sent over and um, we will get that all sorted and sent over to you in the post. Thanks for taking part in that. Um, was William Bryan in the competition? No, he Jay? wasn't, you absolute prick. I was hoping you weren't going to bring this up. Um, I don't know if anybody else had noticed this. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking arsehole. <laughs> in one of the posts that I put on <laughs> Facebook, I had a wonderful encounter with a guy called William Bryan, who... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a comment and this was when I announced that we were working alongside Three Counts Wrestling Merch and uh, they'd sent they put they sent a post out and um, <laughs> I can't do this with the fucking no, show sorry. face you prick <laughs> they, they'd sent a post out saying that they were you know very happy to be working with us and I put a comment straight back because James the absolute prick has put it on the TV screen in front of me. And all I had commented back was, likewise, we feel very privileged and honoured. <laughs> now, William here <laughs> put a comment straight underneath, straight to me, tagging my name in it. Wow, heart emoji. I love your post. You seem like a nice woman. I'm trying to send you a friend request, but it's not going through. That's why I decided to drop a comment here. Heart emoji. If you don't mind sending me a friend request, let's be friends. Thanks. Two flowers emojis. Thanks for that, William. Two roses. Thanks for that, William. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how I um, how I come under the uh, you seem like a nice woman comment. Do you know what I love about it so much? <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> I know that this is the sponsor for us because the sponsor started asking him questions as well. <laughs> <laughs> like put um like <laughs> um yeah I, I thought it was going to be this. I'll be honest with you that's why I find it so fucking hilarious I thought it was going to be someone like from the from the podcast who fucking was going to go I really like your work and stuff like then I started reading it and I was like what the fuck I don't think it's a real person. Oh, absolutely not. Of course, it's a bot, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it is a bot. Apparently, uh, everyone, this is an orthopaedic surgeon. We're oh, giving yeah, this yeah. person a shout out, by the yeah, way. Yeah, thanks, William Brian. Um, yeah. yeah. Still be in touch. Yeah, my friend request got lost in the post. Uh, cheers for that, mate. Oh. <laughs> Good luck with the orthopaedics. <laughs> We said we was going to mention it. I forgot about it, you <laughs> dick. <laughs> I'm Fuck. sorry, I think it was hilarious. If it was done to me, I'd have carried it on further. Fuck you, know. Well, there we go, folks. <laughs> I thought it was a lovely thing to uh, end on. Oh, right, yeah. I, I have a shout-out to make. I want to test someone. Yep. Oh, also. Yes? You need to announce your picks. It's your turn. Okay. Uh, top three and a, top, and a best of moment or something, whatever you want to pick. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do then. I'll start with that. Okay, for our topics next month, our first topic, and this is going to be the top three one, is strange occurrences in wrestling matches or strange pay-per-views as a whole. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Oh, I like that. Oh, that's, yeah. Okay. Nice. Best moments. Best, I, best or worst, to be honest. Could be anything. Okay, best three women's matches. Oh, no, yeah. Nice. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Shit, yes. Yep. Yeah. 
And obviously, as usual, we'll be covering uh, recent events, current events, and giving you all our feedback. And also, we'd love to hear from you guys again. Uh, back to you for your shout out. Ah, oh, of course, yeah. You, uh, you, you really put me behind the bloody eight ball there. I was thinking to myself in my head, I was thinking, what the fuck am I going to say <laughs> for the top threes? Uh, we got it out there. I actually think they're quite good. Yeah, I like them. Uh, yeah, so this shout out is actually a tester. This is to see if my niece is actually watching till the end of the podcast. Yeah. So this is a shout out to Jasmine May. She is a massive wrestling fan and her favourite wrestler at the moment is Bianca Belair. And I'd just like to mention that, I, again, not bashing the girls too much shows that some girls and some yeah, women absolutely. really see these women as icons. Damn right, and they should do. Yep. Absolutely they should do. Good on them. Okay. <coughs> so, there we go for episode five. As usual, we'll um, we'll let you know on the social media pages when it's up to view. Um, massive shout out again to Kyle J for all his hard work behind the scenes, um, sorting everything out to get us on different streaming sites. Uh, much appreciated as always, mate. Thanks a bunch. And um, as always, folks, take care of yourselves and um, we'll see you next month. Yes, we shall see you next month. Take care, guys. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye.